following transmission has been encrypted to protect you, the listener, and the transmitter. Please destroy upon listening. Here's the leader of your underground, Chris Butler. Yeah, we got Chris Butler in the studio. Rob Carson here. Chris Butler, how are you, sir? Welcome back. I am good, Rob. Good to be back. I know you've been kind of uh, you've been kind of under the weather. You got a Absolutely. few things going on, but uh, yeah. you are back with a vengeance. I am back with the living <laughs> with a vengeance. Well, Very I tell you good. what, stomach flu. It's not cool, dude. Uh, yeah, it's it's the worst of the worst of the worst. So, and do you know when it hit me, Rob? What between the main course and dessert on Thanksgiving? Oh no! Yeah. Oh I, no, no! dessert. No dessert. Oh, that Missed is just it. yeah. That is just sad. See, if I were if we're gonna strike me during a meal before the dessert would be fine. Yeah, I'm not a big dessert dude. So, well, that that Thanksgiving, <laughs> that traditional Thanksgiving meal is, yeah. is not my favorite. And I, the only reason I put up with it is to get to the dessert. Was, oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> By that time, I was sicker than a dog. Well, I hope you had a, a great Thanksgiving. How is the holiday season going for you so far, my friend? Great. How about you? Uh, are you busy. I'm the busiest I know you are. unemployed uh, dude you ever would encounter. I'm on a bunch of different radio stations around the country. I'm on uh, uh, in Dallas tonight. I'm on in Atlanta next week and, uh, and Phoenix next week. The following, I'm on Chicago. I guess I'm the busiest unemployed guy. No I'm doubt. America's favorite second stringer. Right. When it, when it comes to radio. Oh, I bumped your camera. Holy cow. Sorry about that. That's all right. All right. Well, anyway, welcome to the show. Um, this is an interesting um, uh, holiday season so far. We're going to get to uh, what's going on. Let's talk a little bit to start off, I guess, uh, about inflation. What's going yeah. on in the uh, in the United States as far as inflation is concerned? Yeah. Well, it, and here's, here's why it's important. Yeah. Because you've got a Federal Reserve out there that's ready to jack up interest rates, probably jacking them up as we speak, actually, Yeah. because uh, there's a meeting today, right now. Uh, but the, the reason that's important for investors and even non-investors is because if inflation heats up, yeah. interest rates will be jacked up. Uh, you'll make more on your deposits at the bank. But on the other hand, uh, you're going to pay more to buy a house or a yeah. car. Yeah. Or So it is important to watch this. And uh, there's two uh, different price uh, measures of inflation that the market follows. Anyway. Okay. One of them is uh, something called PPI, producer price index, which is what uh, producers pay when they're gotcha. building stuff, right? Gotcha. And then there's the consumer price index, and that's what you and I pay yeah. at the grocery store. PPI is blowing up. I mean, we are at a six-year high. People are not talking about inflation. They're not yeah. expecting it, and it's here. All right, so they're going to have to start paying attention. Now, CPI hasn't caught up to PPI yet, mm -hmm. uh, but then again, they, they monkey around with that number so much, it wouldn't surprise me if they saw nothing. Uh, we, you and I know, we go to the store, we know there's inflation. Uh, CPI says about two, a little under 2% if you strip out uh, food and energy. So inflation is heating up. Yeah. And this is what's, I, I think, interesting, Rob, is that the Federal Reserve, they're out there with the express, they've said this, they want to destroy your purchasing power by 2% a year. Wow. That means inflation of two that's their their goal is two percent a year of inflation really but if you look at stocks rob and you look at home prices rob and you look at bitcoin rob, <laughs> do you we'll, see we'll any get, inflation do you see any inflation in those three i'm just thinking isn't it business bitcoin i think doing pretty well bitcoin's all right <laughs> what's the inflation rate on bitcoin oh, a thousand well, percent uh, yeah because it, yeah, i think it was two weeks ago it was at ten thousand went to twelve thousand now you said today 18. it's at eighteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars unbelievable bitcoin i wish i would have when they were just i got you know we could be billionaires right you know oh, yeah. seven or eight years ago we they, we could have bought a pizza for 40 uh, bitcoins and we could have been billionaires have you heard Ugh. the story of the guy in great britain that ha that mined 1700 bitcoins that he no. had on his hard drive threw away his hard drive oh and now wants to excavate a landfill a dump to get his, well, it's worth it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, when, when you're talking about millions of dollars, uh, it is worth it. Wow. And that's what he's looking to do. Now, he's going to be the most regretful person uh, on the planet uh, if this thing continues to escalate yeah. like it has. Well, we've heard, and we'll get more into this, uh, Bitcoin, you said that uh, they say it's going 150000 I heard on the Glenn Beck show. Uh, Stu and his buddy talking. They were talking million dollars. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Who knows, dude? You know, you don't, you know, don't know, Chris. It could be zero Absolutely. tomorrow. Absolutely. And there are people who are mortgaging their homes to buy Bitcoin. Yes, you're. Right. You're out of your effing mind. <laughs> and, that, and that's usually the sign of a bubble. Let's not forget, too, Rob. You, yeah. you don't have to go back too many hundreds of years yes. to revisit the tulip mania in uh, the Netherlands or uh, Holland. Okay. Uh, Amsterdam tulip market blew up a bubble people guess what they were doing back then i don't know 
mortgaging their homes. To well, buy I thought you were going to say selling their children. Because well, I'm, I th- I'm sure if you at, went. At this point, I yeah. might for yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. Just, you know, maybe this week. Right. If the price is right. <laughs> you're, you're probably just a few hairs away. <laughs> uh, they've got strong hands. They're little. They can get in the machinery. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it is It is interesting. I want to go back to you talking about uh, uh, the Fed and raising rates. Yeah. The, the, let's look at this economy the last eight years. It's been artificially propped up by the, yeah. by the Fed pumping money into the markets mm-hmm. and by friggin' in uh, the interest rates. And interest rates have always been a the, the tool of the Fed yeah. to uh, speed up or slow down the economy. Right. And, and we were honestly, we were ready for a correction. You have been getting your mortgage for 3.4 and 3.6% forever. I signed a mortgage in Washington, D.C. for seven and three quarters in 2004. Wow. So it's not, dude, and it was much higher. It's been higher than that before, certainly. Yeah. But we're due, we're oh, yeah, much, yeah. We're, we're way overdue for a mortgage uh, uh, or for, for, a, for an interest rate increase. I, absolutely. Honestly. And it's a sign, to me, it's a sign that the economy is rocking. We had 3.3 GDP the last quarter, the 3 point the first two, and fourth quarter is going to be over 4%, dude. Well, I, I think that you're exactly right about the, uh, uh, the, the economy being in the doldrums. The Fed started raising rates before our economy started to take off. So this is a little surprising. Yeah, yeah. It's hard for an economy to take off while the Fed is raising rates. They didn't wait for it. They didn't wait for the economy to start growing first, then raise rates. Yeah. Remember, they did this in 2015. They started in 2015. That Our economy yeah. was doing what in 2015? Uh, well, yeah, 1%, 1.2. One right. Yeah. Right. So this is kind of <laughs> remarkable, isn't it? That yeah. uh, the economy has kind of refound its sea legs, uh, well, despite yeah, d- the fact that they're hiking rates. And despite there were three hurricanes, three massive, massive right. hurricanes. Right. Uh, you think about all of the things that are going on in the country that could, uh, you know, should bode for a slower, at least third quarter. But there's something going on, and despite it all, despite it all, and by the way, I just saw that uh, it looks like they made a move on the uh, the rate. The, the, well, no, 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 on the uh, on the tax uh, cuts for oh, business. Oh, right, it right. looks like they're going to mm-hmm. rock that before the end of the year. Right. When that hits, when that that corporate rate drops to twenty, or I think 21. 20, 21, kaboom, kaboom. I I, I think it's going to mean a lot. Yes, there will be there will be people who make a lot of money who are not working for the companies. They are board members. They are shareholders. Right. I get that, but I really think it's going to bode well for the American worker. I do. Well, here here's the thing: when you uh, watch CNBC all day long, or CNN, or MSNBC, and you have a parade usually of uh, Democrat senators and Congress people uh, before the. Uh, the, the camera telling you that this is a tax cut for the rich, you have to wonder, yeah. have you actually done the calculations for yourself? Because I have, and I come out a winner, and yeah. I am not uber wealthy. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, most people, if they put pen to paper, yeah. uh, are going to find that they're getting something back. Mm-hmm. And you say you're not uber wealthy, but your butler actually just uh, told me right. as he's standing outside the door with his monocle and his top hat that right. uh, you've got he's, a half an hour before you get on your private he's jet. He's actually an indentured <laughs> servant, but uh, <laughs> let's not split hairs. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that's going to make a major difference. Um, why the hell not? It's the first time. You know, this president is doing what he said he was going to do. That's that's the remarkable thing about this president. You may uh, say what you want to say about Jerusalem becoming the, uh, the yeah. uh, being recognized as the capital of Israel. Uh, ever, for the last three presidents have said they were going to do it. Mm-hmm. They didn't do it. Donald Trump finally did it. Uh, we're talking about revamping the tax code. We've had campaign promise after campaign promise after campaign promise. We have a chief executive at the executive branch now. And he's getting what he said he was going to do done. And re- deregulation, uh, you know, cutting tax rates. I just, this is why the economy is rocking, buddy. We, we haven't even, it hasn't even become real yet. A lot of these things haven't even been implemented yet. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, now? go ahead. Sure. We, we've had a couple of different ideas, haven't we, with the, these tax cuts. One was, we're going to wait till 2019. The other was, uh, it'll start in 2018. Yep. And there's even whispers that it could be retroactive, right, through the beginning of 2017. Okay. Uh, doesn't it, to a certain extent, depend on, uh, how they implement that. And and my question to you is, because certainly you follow this stuff more than I do, uh-huh. would the election of, uh, or the, the non-election, I should say, of, of uh, more in Alabama in any way speed up, do you think, the desire to implement this retroactively to January 1, 2017? Uh, you would think that because we got another Democrat right. in, in, the, in the Senate. Um, right. 
I just did a podcast, national podcast on uh, on the Roy Moore, uh, the supposed de- defeat. One point five percent of the vote uh, right. is what the lead was. Yep. Uh, he was a turd sandwich without the bread. Oh, Roy Moore was a turd absolutely. sandwich. By the way, Donald Trump did not endorse Roy Moore not until the first. last week. Yeah, and right. and by the way. Luther Strange was his candidate originally. Mm-hmm. Okay, so don't act like uh, Donald Trump was all in and all done for Roy Moore. Yeah. He was not. He right. was not in for Roy Moore right. till the last week. And even then, he said the, the seat is more important than the person who's in it. And that's Republicans had to do that. But uh, but here's the, here's the positive about it. Just on a political standpoint, the Republicans once again can claim the moral high ground. Uh, everybody on the Democrat side, everybody on MSNBC was saying that if, if Roy Moore right. wins, the Republican Party is the party of pedophiles. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is absurd on the face of it. Right. So once again, we can at least say at least we we don't vote for somebody. Uh, you know, we don't consider the party and the position higher than the fact right. that they were the the uh, you know what that he was dating teenage girls. I do think there was something to the allegations. I, you know, I he's a creepy, Smoke, he's a fire, creepy you know. dude. Just a yeah. kind of a creepy dude. And, and they, they they estimate Rob that. Luther Strange would have taken that by ten to fifteen points. Oh, I don't doubt that at all. So. It, it would, it would, this isn't this isn't a bellwether shift in the state of Alabama. Right. No. Uh, Alabama has not gone has no. not gone left of center and Democrat. No, no way that no. happened. And, and, and that is kind yeah. of the, the theme this morning too. That I heard uh, was that, and now the Republicans are really scared about the midterm elections. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But certainly, if they are, it's not because of this. No, no, I don't think so. Um, I I don't think it's a bellwether. I th- I think you can do your little victory dance if you're a Democrat and all that stuff, but uh, whatever. Uh, Let's talk about the stock market. Um, You know, obviously 25% increase since Donald Trump took office. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about what you expect. Is this, is this another bubble? Is this going to continue to go through the ceiling? I have a feeling uh, the, I I don't see the end in sight. If you look at what's going to happen, I think to manufacturing in this country because of the tax cuts. I I think that one of of the, and I don't know if you've been following this, but who's got a problem with the tax cuts. And I, I think this is indicative um, China has a problem with the tax cuts. Okay. Europe has a problem with the tax cuts. What does that tell you? It says we're going to start kicking ass. That's right. Yeah. And, and they ought to be afraid that yeah. they will be losing capital to the United States. That's exactly why they're mad. Yeah. That Financial Times did a big uh, uh, article on it yesterday. Uh, we've been following the China story for a while. They are very upset about this, and they're going to in- increase capital controls to try to keep capital in China. Why? Because they're scared they're going to come to the, the Chinese firms will start to have a presence in the United States. Yeah. So uh, that is big. If that's what, what we are expecting to happen, uh, I would be uh, one of those that says, yeah, I think that is going to happen. And I also think that uh, uh, when you, you look at uh, the stock market right now, you do have to say, and I do, that it's overvalued. Yeah. I just don't see it breaking down right now. Obviously, that can change on a week-to-week basis, but it is not breaking down now. It doesn't seem to me to be tenuous right now. And and you know what's good news, Rob? As a market guy, what you like to see is when you have this big run-up like we've seen over the past several months, you do actually like to see people take profits in in one sector and put them in an undervalued sector, and they are doing that. And retail... I mean, you, you and I were just talking off yep, air about yep. retail, right? Yep. Retail was kicked to the curb, okay? No one would touch Macy's. You, oh, yeah. You know? Oh, uh, yeah. Macy's <clears throat> was screaming to buy me because I am a value, and no one would touch it. Well, now they are, Rob. Now they yep. are. We're seeing that that turnover within the market itself, which leads me to conclude that that's one of the reasons why I am somewhat optimistic about the near term. Well, I saw uh, in your notes here, financial, industrial, and retail stocks are, are uh, leading. Tech stocks are stabilizing. Right. Um, what is the Apple? Uh, what's the Apple effect on the tech stocks um, with regard to? I guess the ten came out. Um, it's good, but maybe it's kind of evened out as far as just how crazy people are for those products, or what? You, you know what's happening to Apple? What? They are losing the shine. Uh, <laughs> I've heard analyst after analyst talk about what they like in the tech space, yeah. and they are not talking about Apple. Now, whether that has to do with kind of the, the product life cycle of the iPhone, I, I'm not really sure. But I think what they're really saying is, look at all these other great tech companies that have more opportunity, yeah. that, that are doing neat things. Apple stopped doing neat things, and they're kind of tied to uh, putting out uh, big, bigger and better uh, iPhones, and I'm not sure that that's going to capture much market. I tell you what, we've got uh, you know in the, in here I've got uh, Amazon's got some great products. 
Yeah. Uh, I've got the Alexa. It's, it's more remarkable. You're right. That's there's, awesome. there's a bunch of different Alexa products, uh, smaller ones. Uh, there's my, my, I just got my wife a new product. Um, I won't, it's a little, it's like a, an Alexa, but it's got a TV screen on it. So the tech is, is sick and, and it's not all just Apple. I also got to tell you, I don't think that price point of a thousand dollars on the Apple 10, on the iPhone 10, I thought that was kind of like, uh, that was it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I agree with you. I think a lot of people have just said no. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, that it's not worth it. And for me personally, that that it, you know, value is subjective. Everybody's going to say whether or not that phone is worth a thousand dollars to them. It is not to me. Yeah. And I and I'm an Apple fanboy. Yeah. Uh, yeah me too. I, I mean, I like the phone. Do you have a ten? I do not. Do you, I think your butler does. <laughs> he, he, he does. <laughs> Then I'm what, overpaying. What about what about industrial um, uh, stocks? What who, who are you looking at here? I would assume that that fossil fuels might not be a bad uh, investment right now. No, okay, they're not. Okay. And in fact, I wonder after our conversation about uh, inflation uh, and interest rates, I wonder how many investors are actually positioned to take advantage of inflation. Uh, you know who is mm. uh, Caterpillar. Uh, and uh, some of the, the commodity materials names out there. Yeah. Caterpillar very quietly went from being a laughing stock during oh. the, 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 the five, six, seven years after the Great Recession yep. to now, I mean, you look at that stock chart and you think, uh, oh. where was I at the bottom of that? Uh, oh, well, it, Caterpillar is not only just uh, domestically, but internationally. Internationally, that's exactly just gigantic, what it is. And, just gigantic. And taking advantage of some big time, uh, international economic growth, yeah, and, and they're yeah. at, at the forefront of it. So I, I, I think that they are kind of like a, an indirect play on that inflation. Commodities, I don't think people, and I don't blame them. Uh, they look at commodities and commodities companies, and they think, you know, there hasn't been inflation uh, in the world here for about a decade. They've forgotten who these names are, yeah. and I'm telling you that we need to. I'm not saying inflation is coming. I am saying we need to be alert that it is coming oh, sure. and make sure that we've got an opportunity in our portfolios to take advantage of it. Well, hopefully if uh, inflation comes our way, uh, wages will increase and we'll see what happens with regard to the, you know, the, the, the uh, say, tax say rates on, on businesses. Let me yeah. say something about that. You're right. Tax plays a big role in it, but here's something else. Mm -hmm. If you can get the federal reserve to take their, their foot uh, off of the market and let interest rates go up, it increases the yield on capital and we'll start to see companies put money in themselves as opposed to the stock well, market. Well, we have not made any money on um, savings. Which is utterly, in, uh, absolutely in years. Yeah, that's right. Dude, you, dude, there's no reason to put money in the bank. It's a waste of your, it's, you're it not is. getting anything. Right. It, one of the worst in investments, I guess you could say, ever. For the last decade or so, you're not making any, any other thoughts on the uh, stock market right now. No, I, th I think we we covered it probably a little <laughs> toward the ad nauseum. Uh, but but uh, I, I do think that it's important that on a weekly basis we look at it and we assess where we're at. And over the past two weeks now, what we've seen is some very healthy rotation within that market to go into some finance too, Rob. Not yeah. just retail. Finance was beaten up, but now as interest rates are starting to go up. People are starting to think maybe uh, maybe the banks will make some money, okay. uh, and so they're, yeah. they're they're throwing money at banks as well. So that kind of healthy rotation <clears throat> tells me that maybe the end is not nigh, uh, and that once you get some uh, the the real effect of tax cuts hitting our economy, it is likely that we will see some additional growth. I seen uh, on your notes here um, that uh, we've created fourteen trillion in funny money since two thousand eight. What do you mean by that? Uh, central banks like our Fed, but they're not alone. Uh, there, there's the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank. All of them have created money out of thin air to do one thing. Don't forget Dr. Evil's bank in the, in the volcano. That, that's right. There's that too. Right. There's that too. Where, yeah. where, where he proposed a ransom of a million dollars. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, in, in like 2015, he wanted a million dollars yes, yes, yes. to save the planet. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, we're, we're talking about trillions here, like you said, for trillion dollars worth of money created out of thin air to buy bonds from the private sector that that puts the money in the hands of the private sector and these central banks all thought well these people are going to 
put that into the real economy. No, they didn't. They put it in Bitcoin and stocks. Wow. <laughs> so, all right. Interesting, interesting. Uh, you had some thoughts about the Bank of Japan other than that or no? Uh, well, I, yeah. The Bank of Japan scares me because their model, uh, they own, what, two, uh, two-thirds, 70 75% of all of J Japanese exchange-traded funds, which are like mutual funds. Imagine if in the United States our government owned 75% of our mutual funds. Are wow. you kidding me? Wow. But well, that's Japan. Th that's what the government wants to do here. That's what Democrats want to do here. I am absolutely scared that that is that's going exactly to happen. exactly what they want to do, too. If, if, the, if the market sells yeah. off, yeah. you're going to see a lot of pressure for the, yeah. the Federal Reserve to start buying <laughs> stocks. And when they do, uh, we can no longer call the stock market a market. Nope. No, it's uh, it's definitely tied into the government. What the yeah. government does, uh, a policy tool, stock market as policy tool. I'm yeah. not down with that. No, you had some thoughts about Jerome Powell here, I guess. Yeah, Jerome Powell. Did, did I write the uh, the quote there? Rob? The Fed will respond with force to threats to the nation's stability. So, if you were wondering if the Fed plans on buying stocks the next time we're down ten percent, I think that comment from incoming Fed uh, Chairman uh, Jerome Powell says it all. Uh, he said he would fight with force a threat to our stability, which brings up a pet peeve of mine as an economist, uh, and that is this. Stability at all other costs has to be maintained. My question is why? The moon is stable, and it's yeah. a dead planet. Yeah. Anything <laughs> living is not stable. Let it go. You don't yeah. have to react to every blip in, in our nation's stability. And in fact, sometimes instability is exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah, my marriage has been stable for a long time. There's nothing happening. <laughs> Hello. There's nothing happening there. Let's, <laughs> let's move on to talk a little bit about, and I, and I saw this today, it, it looks like malls may be having a little better season. Is it because, uh, and you had mentioned it earlier with retail, uh, is it because maybe people are, it's just not as fun to get the packages delivered to the front stoop with the Amazon people? Is that, you I, know, nice to get out every once in a while? Absolutely. You know? I believe that this is seasonal. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. You, you know, Amazon hit our country at a time where I had been to Oak Park Mall uh, for about five, six, seven Christmases in a row. One day I would do all of my shopping in one day at Oak Park Mall so I could yeah. say I'm done. Right. Yeah. And then Amazon came along and I hated that day. I hated that day at Oak Park Mall. Did you? But Amazon came along, made it so easy. But here's the thing. What? Shopping for me is not an event. I mean, it's not a day. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I, and, and so I don't look at it like that, but I know I may very well be in the minority, especially around Christmas time. Right. Why yeah. not? Why not go to the mall? Why not get hot chocolate and cookies and take the family and uh, yeah. visit Santa and watch the train? All that stuff can be an event. Yeah. Right. A destination. Well, my, my daughter and I, we like to actually go to the mall and walk around. Um, you know, she hates to shop, which, you know, what she hates to shop. She's 12 years old. She hates it. Oh, but she's not a girly time. girl, you know. Maybe that'll that'll yeah, change her. That, but like like we went to buy shoes the other day. She just wears tennis shoes, right? And thank God, I'm, I don't want. She's not a girly girl. She's just a, a girl, yeah. and uh, she doesn't like it. So I'm very grateful about that. My wife doesn't really like to shop unless we, of course, go to Target. Target. What is it about Target? Target. It, it just it's Target, man. They, you know what they, they have, have everything. You know what they do, and and there's something magical to and honestly, I'll be honest, to women. About Target. There's something about Target. It's clean. It's <clears throat> progressive. I, I'm not meaning like politically, right. but it's it, it's it's it, like it's nice looking. It's fashionable. The, the clothes are right. I I like Target for just clo some clothing items and some things like that. Uh, the groceries, uh, their groceries are a little high. Um, they, 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 you got to be careful when you're shopping at Target with groceries. Um, but uh, but Target, there's something about Target. It is a destination for women. Um, they they enjoy the experience. They really enjoy the experience of Target. It's not a bother to go to Target. It's actually it's a destination. Well, and I think a mall is too. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it depends on the mall, right? Sure. And, and certainly, here's the thing: uh, that the death of brick and mortar 
has been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. It, it's going to be trimmed down and is being trimmed down, sure. but there is still going to be brick and mortar, and it's going to be there for this exact reason, for people that view shopping as a destination or a day or an event. Yeah. Well, we've seen, we've seen uh, some uh, w- ways that malls have changed. The traditional covered mall, although Oak Park's still kicking ass. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> Oak Star is still kicking ass. Although there are a lot of empty lots yep. around Kansas City. Yep. I mean, there's one right up on Metcalf. Uh, there's just a Sears, yeah. a lonely little Sears there now. Yeah. <laughs> you 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 weren't even here when that place was thriving, were you? No, no. Metcalf South. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm sure it was glorious when I was a kid in Omaha. It was Westwood and Crossroads, and they were or West um, West but not West World. That would be weird because like Yule Brenner there. Um, <laughs> but West Roads and Crossroads. That was that, and uh, and and it was Yule a destination. Brenner. You went to see Santa Claus, and that was uh, and that was it, and. Um, I, I just I think I think there's always a correction, Chris. We always go one yeah, too far right. one way, right. and and you know we it, and honestly, it's nice to get that package from Amazon, right? But at the same time, I don't mind going out to the food court. I don't mind. If there's a decent restaurant at the at the mall. We'll hit the restaurant and have some and which, walk around, tool around a little bit, you know. Which, by the way, those those restaurants, those anchor tenants that are are serving food, yeah. uh, at restaurants really or at malls are really holding the the remaining malls together. You bet. Uh, you want that anchor tenant to be a restaurant number one. Then you need some kind of department store. Sure. Uh, and so, so it's possible. Here's the other thing: the economics of mall retail has changed. Right? Yeah. You are not going to pay top dollar to rent out a space at mm-hmm. a mall, and the mall understands that. So, a lot of them have actually <clears throat> refinanced themselves to make it economically viable. Also, I'll mention the uh, the entertainment complex like Zona Rosa. Right. Yeah. Uh, those are cool, um, and and people like the fact that there's a Dave and Buster's. There's a movie theater. Absolutely, there's yeah. a host of stores. There's some cool right. restaurants. There are some coffee joints. It, that is a, it, that's a little, it's like a little town. It is. Uh, and, and it's a neat, neat idea. I, I think it's, it's good. And it's rocking here. Yeah, it is. What's the, I'm trying to, I'm drawing a blank on the one by the speedway. That's uh, Onorosa. That, that's, that's Onorosa. What's, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I, I go there, but I just forgot the damn name. <laughs> uh, that's a complex there by the speedway. Oh, oh, but, oh, 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 right by the speedway? Yeah, right by okay. the speedway. That's not Zona Rosa. That's no. hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll find it. I hate to put you on the spot like this. Yeah, I always forget. Uh, Mike, I just had it the other day. Hold on, uh, uh, shopping center. Hold on, shopping center by the Speedway. Shopping. Uh, hold on. I don't know why I'm not remembering. Uh, by uh, Kansas Speed. And, and I can tell you why I'm not. <laughs> why? Because you don't, I don't like to shop. You don't like to sh- legends, dear lord. Legends, dear lord. Rob, come legends. on, man. Legends is uh, is really cool. Um, they've got a uh, yeah, the, it <clears> is cool. You're right. They've got the uh, the uh, indoor water park over there. Yeah. A couple of hotels over there. So um, that is and that's you're walking around. It's outside. The lights. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, th- I think it's cool. So there's that. I want to mention one other thing. Amazon could be a $2 trillion company. Yeah. This is Amazon. The company is 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 a phenomenon you and I have never seen before. Yes. A city was built around General Motors called Detroit. Yeah. This is a... It could shift your gem- demographics. It could shift the, the future of the airport. It could shift the future of a population center, depending on where the Amazon warehouse goes. Yeah. We've, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this. We haven't. <clears throat> well, and I, I think you're you're pretty close to accurate with the uh, bringing up Detroit. That's close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the closest we've seen, certainly not in our lifetime. No, no. Have we seen it, though? And, and, it's, and this is just about a warehouse. They're not building all these things. You know, it's just that's the destination. Right. What, what Bezos has done is just remarkable i mean it's remarkable and the, the to their credit yeah. what they've done is they've taken a relatively simple idea yeah. and said people want to get books uh delivered yeah. uh, to them uh, and they've expanded but here's how it's worked <laughs> Rob. by yeah. the way i'll be the first to admit i forgot this. they used to be it used yeah. to be about books. books it used to be about books Holy and, crap. and let me tell you and I, I don't have a problem admitting this either yeah. uh, when the idea first came out i said to myself I don't know if they're going to make it because I myself like going to bookstores yeah. and browsing. Yeah. Uh, and even n- now, I don't do that anymore. I get my books from Amazon. Uh, but what they've done, Rob, to become a two trillion dollar company, which ultimately they will, uh, is execute. Yeah. It's one thing to have an idea, right? I mean, we can all have ideas. Yeah. They execute. 
Yeah. And they execute better than anybody else out there. Right I got to tell you, I mean, they're taking a little heat from the European press because of the hours they're putting their delivery people through. Right. That's going to catch up with them a little bit, I yeah. think. Um, but but it is a remarkable example. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and wrap things up today. Um, you want to tell everybody where they can find you online and whatnot. I know you're on uh, your Facebook under Free Market Underground. Of course, that's, that's right. where you're seeing this video right now. Yeah, the uh, radio show uh, appears uh, every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock on KCMO AM, uh, 710 on your dial. Yep. Th that, uh, uh, I should probably mention, we are in the process of updating our website, but you will now still be able to go to freemarketunderground.com nice. and get the archived past uh, radio shows. You go to Free Market Underground on Facebook to get, what is this now, our third? Yes. Our third uh, Facebook uh, video podcast, video cast, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of those places, and by the way, and I know that you help do this too, Rob, and we're appreciative of it. Every day we try to have something up, uh, posted that I think has something to do with free markets, the economy or markets. Yeah. Well, I, I try to post on there as you well, do. uh, just as a consumer, you're the expert. I'm the consumer. Uh, yeah. Free market underground at Facebook. Uh, we're trying to make that a destination, a place that you can just check in. Uh, you can even ask questions. You can post comments and all of that stuff. So, uh, good to see you again, my brother. Good to see you. All right. Roberto. Absolutely. We will see you again soon. <laughs> Please destroy all traces of the preceding message using the standard protocol. Alert all friendly parties to the existence of the underground, but only after the requisite background check. Until the next transmission, keep up the good fight.